So there is an element of subjectivity in the way the formists approach their paintings. Now, between 1901 and 1906, several comprehensive exhibitions were held in Paris, making the work of Vincent van Gogh, Paul Gauguin, Paul Cesar widely accessible for the first time. For the painters who saw the achievements of these great artists, the effect was one of liberation. And they began to experiment with radical new styles, which included the exploration of a new role of color. And this is what Hobbeson is all about, exploring or experimenting with a new role of color. So it is in that sense that Hobbeson was the first movement of this modern period in which color ruled supreme, color played a dominant role, not only in terms of its application, but, but also in terms of composing the entire field too. The Fox represented the first break with the artistic traditions of the past. The movement's emphasis on formal values and expressive use of color, line, and brushwork helped liberate painting from the representational norms that had dominated Western art since the Renaissance. Fauvism was the first explosive 20th century art movement. To the extent that a lot of critics, they thought that these paintings, which today now we consider as or acknowledge as for these paintings, and with great, uh, we put a high regard on them, these paintings were looked uh, at uh, with a great amount of suspicion to the extent that a lot of critics thought these are the paintings which. Uh, look like as if they were done by some wild beasts. And this is what exactly the term for means in French, wild beast. So, it is basically a derogatory term. Derogatory term applied by the art critics to criticize the now famous Pobis paintings. But ironically, what was initially used as a derogatory term, that is Pobisum or Paw or wild beast, became a great name, a nomenclature for the movement for this initiative in the early part of the 20th century. So look at this painting by Henry Matisse titled Woman with a Hat, Madame Matisse, painted in 1904 and 5. Now, as Marcus himself has said, the color was not given to us in order that we should imitate nature. It was given to us that we can express our own emotions. This is a very important statement that Mathis made here. Because for Mathis and for all the Fauvis painters, color is not something that is preconceived or pre-mediated, something that is already given. Artist is there or the painter is there only to follow it. No, it is not the role of color. Color or the role of color or the very value and definition of color in a painting could be altered and revolutionized by inventing the color. Not necessarily pigment, but by innovating the notion of color. And this is what these people tried to do throughout this movement. And secondly, usually, until Pogism, color played a slightly subservient role in the sense that contour lines define the form first, followed by color. But in the Pobis paintings, you see just the reverse is happening. Colors, the body of color, the pigments, the presence of the colors, these things are playing the defining role for the forms and lines might be following, or lines may be completely absent. It doesn't matter. But colors uh, are playing the role of defining the form, giving uh, an embodiment to the form, giving a status, a visual status to the form. For that matter, if you look at this painting called The Open Window by Mathis, you can see 
what exactly Hobbism they are trying to do. They were up to a kind of aesthetics where color will play not only a dominant role, but color will play the, the role of defining the forms, establishing the forms, visualizing the forms. Color will become, and it did become in the hands of the Hobbist painters, the principal tool for a painting. Now, apart from Henry Mathis, there were other painters, as I have already mentioned, like Andre de Rey. His style was slightly different from Mathis, but they all shared this common concept of color, where color will play the dominant role, color will have an independent existence, color can, the way you apply color in a forest painting, it may look that the color has become very arbitrary, illogical, but no matter what, as far as the responses are concerned, in order to liberate color from its earlier subservient roles, you need to use color, at least in the beginning, quite radically. So what looks arbitrary is actually not arbitrary because uh, artists like Devane and Flaming, they figured out a certain intuitive way of juxtaposing various colors, however illogical it might look at the face value, they are not actually magical. They have their own reason, own logic, and own intuitive uh, rational. And this is something that the Fauvists built up over the years to their many drawings and paintings, mainly paintings, and uh, consistent practice. This was difficult, really speaking, for the Fauvists as well as for the viewers to receive this kind of painting where color seems to be uh, ruling uh, a mock and creating a kind of havoc in the painting where um, age-old and time-tested visual elements like line, perspective, space, everything has become, if not totally irrelevant, but very insignificant, and color has become the principal visual element in these paintings, like this one as well. So, repeatedly you can see, this is what these Fauvist painters are continuously trying and they are able to do it very successfully. That is, trying to push color up as the principal visual element in a work of art. So much so, that there might be areas in a work of art, in a painting, from the point of view of Fauvist painters, where the color may not necessarily conform to the identity of the object. You may apply a color or put a color which is different or in contrast to the identity of the object. So, Fauvism, in that sense, opens up a new visual language possibility by providing a new liberation, a new freedom to the color. And all these painters like Deren, Flaming and Mathis realized it very soon that what they are doing was something revolutionary. Because even if we have seen arbitrary color concept, apparently arbitrary color concept in previous history, like in the pre-Renaissance period, like Gothic painting and all, even where color at least had some symbolic value. Color had some iconographic value. Color carried some religious value. But here, color is reflecting and embodying personal value. Painter's own intuitive choice and intuitive selection is actually defining 
the color palette, shaping the color scape of the paintings. More you look at these Bobby's paintings, this role of color, this dominant role of color gets clearer. Now it is true that Fauvism was a short-lived movement, lasting only as long as its originator, Henry Matisse, who lived from 1869 to 1954, fought to find the artistic freedom he needed. So Fauvism in that sense, as a movement, as a practice, was a tool to gain more artistic freedom. And for a painter like Matisse, who really not only enjoyed, but somebody who understood color better than most of the painters of his time, he had to make color serve his art, rather as Goga needed to paint the sand pink to express an emotion. So this emotional uh, content of a color, not just identity content, but emotional content of color, expressive content of color, intuitive faculty of a color, these elements become increasingly important, not only for Matisse and other Fauvists, but also for later painters in modern Western art. The Fauvists believed very, very strongly and absolutely in color as an emotional force. Color lost its descriptive role and became luminous, creating light rather than imitating it. And we can add to that, that besides losing its descriptive quality, color also lost its uh, lower position in the hierarchy of visual elements. So it rose up the ladder of hierarchy and became a very, very important visual element for a painter who wanted to privilege color over everything else. And Fauvism eventually became a style in early 20th century and beyond also 1910. But it was only popular as a movement for three years, three to four years, in which movement had three exhibitions. Mathis was a leader in that movement and was inspired when his teacher, John Peter Russell, a former friend of his Vincent Van Gogh, and a famous Impressionist painter showed him one of Van Gogh's most Impressionist paintings and much quickly fell in love with that movement. So, somewhere it was connected to Mathis's love for color and his conviction that color, it is possible for a painter to allow color to shape the entire painting. And that is why Mathis could say, to quote him, when I put a green, it is not grass. When I put a blue, it is not the sky. So not only that he is altering the identity and role of the color, he is providing new meaning, new existence, new significance to the color in the context of a painting. And repeatedly in most of his paintings and in paintings by other painters also, not only within Fauvism, but outside Fauvism, who were greatly influenced and inspired by Fauvism, we can see this same thing happening again and again. A kind of uh, a, a confidence where you can uh, actually use color in a so-called arbitrary way, but eventually you are allowing color to play an independent role. Now, in order to pursue and explore this idea, Matisse and other painters, and particularly Matisse, they were painting subject matters which were also very simple. Interestingly, subject matters in Matisse's paintings are never very complex. What makes his paintings very complex is his construction and particularly color construction. It is here that Fauvism played a very important role in shaping Matisse as a painter. In fact, if you look at a painting like this by Matisse, or the list with red bloomers, in fact, this painting has 
references to classical painting, classical motif, it is inclined woman figure, also has some kind of allusion to the past art. But then, once you uh, have noticed these things, next, what you are about to notice is a very strong presence of radiant color scale within the painting. To the extent that you do not look at the contour lines, you do not even look at the details of the objects and the figures, but you look at how several colors, various colors, a whole range of colors is actually constructing and constructing the painting and playing a very vital role in the formation of the painting, the total image. So, for example, this one, when you look at this painting called the Blue Window, again, what you see here is a statement in color. No matter what the subject matter is. So, to make a statement in color by applying very, very bold, strong, and vivid color was not easy. And it is for this reason that Fauvism is considered to be a hugely important movement, however shocking it was, in the context of modern Western art. So, he, but he titles this painting The Red Studio. But here, as you can now easily see, the red color of the studio in the painting may not literally refer to the actual physical red color of the studio in real life. Red color here is not the identity of the studio, but it is a reflection of the way Mathis has perceived this composition. So we will be making a mistake, a serious mistake, if we tend to think that this red color on the table, on the tablecloth, on the floor, or on the wall, or on other objects in the studio, this red color is actually the identity of these objects. If we think so, we will be making a mistake. This is not the way we should be looking at this kind of paintings. Obviously, all these objects cannot have or cannot share the same red color in the same red tone. So, this is a very clear uh, suggestion that in this painting, like many other paintings, the red color has an independent identity in spite of the, of the fact that this red color is also at the same time connected to various objects painted in the paintings. Now, it is difficult, even for the viewers like us, to perceive, understand, and accept this. Because generally speaking, in our normal life, in our waking life, we are also habituated with a similar notion of color, like the traditional art, where we expect that a color, ideally, could always be uh, playing the role of identity of the object. But when we encounter a painting like this, then we actually encounter a different notion of painting, and particularly color, where color is not playing the identity of, of the object. For example, this one also, color is playing an independent role. And marginally, it is also there as a part of the identity of the object, though we know from these paintings and the previous one that a few lines, contour lines, a uh, few divisions within the painting are there to clarify the differences between the table and the wall, wall and the chair, chair and the table, back again. But otherwise, this dominance of a particular color inside the room, dominance of another color outside the room, they have an independent entity. And once we are able to respond to that, then uh, we are ready to actually enjoy and appreciate for these paintings. Here also, 
This painting has a very simple title called Dance 2, but really speaking, more than, and of course this painting does evoke a sense of joy, a sense of celebration, but there is uh, nothing more into it as much, uh, I mean if you are um, looking at the details, if you want to see more details of who these people are, why they are dancing, what is the physical context of this dancing, so this picture will not give you any such detail. What you are supposed to enjoy and appreciate and notice in this kind of paintings is first of all a very strong presence of color and secondly what Mathis eventually achieves after having kind of negotiated with color in a very different way through his practice is a sense of rhythm. So in Mathis paintings you see the presence of an independent entity of color along with a very strong presence of rhythm in his paintings. And this rhythm is again nothing to do with the real rhythm in real life. It is again integral to and intrinsic to the language of painting. So from this very early movements, art movements from early 20th century like Hobbism, which will be followed by Futurism, Dadaism, Surrealism and all that. All these movements, art movements, one after the other, all of them are actually altering the premises, the foundations of art language. Impressionism has already done that and now you have Fauvism doing that once again. But for Fauvist painters, color is the tool. Whereas for Impressionists, it was light. For Futurism, it would be something else. So this is how the entire um, impact of Fauvism, not only on other painters, but also on Mathis himself can be seen uh, present throughout his artistic career. Even when he was doing these beautiful collage paintings, there again you see both these two things. One, a strong presence of color which is playing a very formative role in the painting and second, a sense of rhythm in the composition. Otherwise, if you look at these works, these works really do not have anything very complex or complicated in terms of subject matter. It is only the way you arrange them, the way you compose them, the way you make them behave in a particular work of art. And this is what exactly Mathis achieves and through his hands the language of painting becomes an independent act, not necessarily always tied up with specific subject matter or topic. So, this is where Fauvism becomes a very significant movement which will be followed by other equally important movements all happening in the early part of 20th century.